Hi everyone, in this problem we have to find the interval of convergence for this power series. Here C is a positive number, so it's fixed and it's just some positive number. So to do this problem we'll start by using the ratio test. So the ratio test says that you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And the ratio test produces one of three outcomes. If the result is less than one, we have convergence. If the result is greater than one, we have divergence. And if it's equal to one, we unfortunately have no information. In this problem, we're trying to find the set of all x for which the series converges, which is also called the interval of convergence. So we want convergence, so we'll work this out and we'll purposely set it less than one because we're trying to figure out where it actually converges. So this is the limit. As n goes to infinity of the absolute value. So the first thing we'll do is work out a sub n plus 1. So we'll replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. So this n will be n plus 1 plus 1, so n plus 2. So you have negative 1 to the n plus 2. And then here we have x minus c to the n plus 1. And then over n plus 1. And then c to the n plus 1. Just replacing all of the n's with n plus 1's. Then we're supposed to divide by a sub n. So when you divide by a sub n, you really multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So it's times, so you just take this whole piece, which is a sub n, and then just flip it. So n times c to the n over negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then x minus c to the n. Good stuff. All right, so first notice that all of the negative ones will go away because when you take the absolute value of negative 1 to any power, you're always going to get 1, because negative 1 to any power is going to be either 1 or negative 1. And in any case, the absolute value is 1. Now let's deal with the x minus c's. So we have x minus c to the n plus 1 over x minus c to the n. You can write this as x minus c to the n times x minus c all over x minus c to the n. And boom, look at that, they go away, and you just get x minus c. Okay, let's start writing some stuff down. This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. So we still have the absolute value. The, but wait, the reason we have the absolute value is because we don't know what x is. If we knew that x was positive, we could drop it. But x is a variable, and so we still have to keep it there. So you have x minus c. Okay, the n is gonna hang out, nothing's gonna happen there. And then let's handle the c here. We have c to the n over c to the n plus one. So if we have c to the n over c to the n plus one, that's the same thing as c to the n over c to the n times c to the one. Because when you multiply these, you add the exponents. So this is equal to 1 over c. So this is going to give us a c on the bottom. Oh, and also an m plus 1. We'll still have uh, that m plus 1 there. And I believe that's it. Let me just triple check that that's it. Let's see. We took care of the negative 1 to the n's. Boom, boom. Uh, we handled these. We handled these. And we're left with n over m plus 1. Yep, things look pretty good. When you take this limit, you're basically taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So n over n plus 1, that's just going to approach 1 because uh, the degrees are the same, and so it's the ratio of the coefficients, so 1 over 1. So that's just going to be 1, and so we're left with the absolute value of x minus c over c, and we want that to be less than 1 because we want convergence from the ratio test. All right, good stuff. Now we can just take the absolute value of each piece. And since c is positive, the absolute value of c is just c. And this is less than 1. Multiplying by c, times c, times c. 
absolute value of x minus c less than c. When you drop the absolute value, you get a plus or a minus. So you get a c here, and then you get a negative c over here. And then to solve for x, you would just add c to each piece of this inequality. That's going to give us 0 less than x less than, and then c plus c is 2c. Really good stuff. So now we're almost done. All we have to do is check the endpoints. In other words, we have to check whether or not we have convergence or divergence at these numbers. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the original question so we can reference it. So you have negative 1 to the m plus 1. Then here we have x minus c to the n. And then here on the bottom, it's uh, n times c to the n. OK, good stuff. So to check uh, stuff, all we have to do is take these numbers and plug them in. So let's check 0 first. So let's do that. So check 0. So we have to replace all of the x's with zeros. So it's the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the m plus 1, and then 0 minus c to the n. So it'll just be minus c to the n, and then on the bottom we have n times c to the n. And negative c to the n can be broken up in a really uh, convenient way. You can think of it as negative 1 times c to the n, and then using properties of exponents, you can write this as negative 1 to the n times c to the n. So this becomes the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the m plus 1, negative 1 to the n times c to the n. And it's all over n times c to the n. These cancel, so this is equal to the infinite sum. As n runs from 1 to infinity, what you can do now is add the exponents. When you multiply these, you basically add, so you get n plus 1 plus n, so 2n plus 1, over n. Very good stuff. Now, 2n plus 1 uh, is always odd whenever n is an integer, and here n is an integer. So negative 1 to an odd power is negative 1. So this is going to be the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 over n. And 1 over n is a divergent p-series. Uh, having a negative there is not going to affect anything. It's still going to diverge. So we can say something like diverges by the p-test. And let's explain why, since... Well, there's a 1 here, and that's your p. So p equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1. Remember, uh, the, the p-test will tell you that the series will diverge if p is less than or equal to 1, and it will converge if p is greater than 1. So because we have divergence at 0, we don't include it, so we have a parentheses. All right, last one to check is 2c. Let me just, there we go, so we can see it. So let's check. 2c. So we're just going to plug in a 2c. So you have infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity. Here we have negative 1 to the m plus 1. And we're going to plug in a 2c here. So we'll get 2c minus c to the n. So 2c minus c is just c. And then on the bottom we have n times c to the n. Boom, these go away. This is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the m plus 1 over n. And this is an alternating series. So let's go ahead and go through the motions and explain why it converges. So whenever you're using the alternating series test, your a sub n is always the non-alternating part. It's really important. So I like to always clearly identify it. In this case, it's just 1 over n. Then I'd like to just go through the motions. The first step is to take the limit as n approaches infinity. 
So in this case, we take the limit of 1 over n, and this is going to approach 0. So this is 0. That was kind of loud. I don't know if you heard that in the video, but if you did, if you're curious, uh, today is the 4th of July, and those were fireworks. Okay, so this is 0. And then now we have to explain why it's non-increasing. So non-increasing means decreasing or staying the same. So it is non-increasing. As n gets big, uh, 1 over n gets small, and it keeps getting small. It doesn't like get small and big and small and big. It's just going straight down. Um, so we have both conditions met. So you just say, so converges by the alternating series test. Because it converges, we include the 2c. So let's go back up to our answer. So we put 2c here, and we put a bracket. And this would be the final answer. That would be the interval of convergence for this problem. I went kind of quick because uh, I tried to keep this video short, but even then, we're over 11 minutes. I hope this video uh, is helpful to anyone out there in the world who is trying to learn some mathematics. Good luck.